properly the transpodominal epidural. So first step for the transpodominal epidural is getting a good view. We are doing the most commonly affected levels like L45 or L34. First step, as I have already told, to counting the vertebra and to find out the exact level. Next step is the squaring. So I am starting from the squaring level. Remember, our spine has a curvature. The lumbar spine is usually having a lorosis. So if we want to square the vertebras at the above, we need a causal tilt. If we want to square the vertebrals or the end plates at the lower, lower part, like L5S1, L45, we might require a cranial tilt. Whereas the, the, the vertebra at the middle might not require anything. Like here, we can see actually the L34 vertebra or L34 end plate is already squared. Okay? So, if there is a problem at the L3-4, then you do not need to do any squaring. But if the patient is having problem in, say, L2-3, in those, that case, you have to square it. So how to do that? Let's move it towards the cranial side. Okay? Move it towards the cranial side. Okay. Now we can see, let's show you the level with a pointer. So take a picture. Just wait a minute. Let me share it so that you can also see. So here he is, he has done a little bit of autodegrapher, has done a little bit of cranial tilt. So now we can see this portion that is the L45 portion is squared now. Suppose we want to do the procedure here, then we need to square at the opposite side. Now it is at a cranial tilt. Let me show you the image. So here you can see the CR is at a cranial tilt. Yes. Can yes. you do one thing? Can you zoom out? Hmm. Little from uh, so that we can people can understand the CM position in a better way. Okay, so that is the CM position, it is slightly cranially tilted. And if I want a squaring above, suppose I need to do the procedure at this level, that means L5, L4, L3, L23 level. So, in that case, we need to square towards the leg, towards the opposite side. So, let's do that. Tilt it towards the caudal end. Move it up slightly. Okay. So, see. The now, CRM camera is moving too much. We can't appreciate nicely. But can mother fix it? So now L to three, you can see. Okay, now it's better. Really? Now we right. can understand it nicely. Okay. Now what we are going to do? We want to make it oblique, and depends on which side you want to do the procedure. You have to tilt it to us that side. Suppose the patient is having problem in the left side, you have to make it left oblique. The patient is having problem in the right side, you have to make it right oblique. So in that way, we have to change the direction. Fix, you do not change, need to change the tilt, but you need to do make it oblique towards the left or right side of the patient. Depends on if the patient is having problem in the left side, you have to tilt it towards the left side. If we have a problem, if the patient is having a problem in the right side, we need to tilt it towards the right side. So now let us first put the pointer on the L3. So we can see the L3 and L2 intervertebral disc. Now let us show you how the nerve root emerges at this level. So first I am drawing the nerve root. 
So at this level, Navgut comes out roughly like this. So if this is the exiting Navgut at this level, then we can imagine two triangles here. Number one, a triangle above the nerves. Number two, a triangle below the nerves. Let me draw those triangles so that you can understand those triangles. Now, the triangle above the nerves, let us draw the boundary, lower border of the pedicle, then an imaginary vertical line from here to the nerve, and the third line is itself the border of the nerve. So that is one triangle. This triangle is known as first triangle, and one triangle below the nerve. So it is roughly bounded the upper border of the pedicle of the lower border and medially it is the facet and laterally by the nerve. So we have two triangles here. Now, what are the name of these triangles? The above it is the stress triangle, the below it is the Cambin's triangle. So, the importance of these triangles is that in previous days we used to go to the safe triangle and it is considered to be a safe triangle, that is why it is the named so. But later it is found that safe triangle is not safe, rather this Cambin's triangle is safer. So nowadays we go through the lower triangle, that is the Cambin's triangle. But here I am showing you both the procedures. So let's first go through the Cambin's triangle. What do we do nowadays? First and foremost thing, what we need to do, we need to find the area from where we need to enter. For what? For that, you can take a any opaque object, a pointer, or anything. Here I am taking a pointer, but you can take any opaque object. Okay, so we are down below. Let us go to our level. Now we are over the pedicle, going slightly above and laterally. We are too much lateral. Oh, sorry. Check. We need to go down and medial. Check. So this is almost the area to which we need to put our needle. Now while introducing the needle as like other procedures, the first thing we need to do is we need to bend the tip of the needle slightly towards the notch or away from the notch and we have to remember that at where in which side we have bent. So here I am bending towards the notch. Why is this bend? See, this is the bend. Okay, this is the bend at the tip. So why we have bend it? Because with this bend, we can manipulate the needle inside the patient's body. I took a picture now. Okay, so I thought what was right. It is actually not in correct position. Check once again. Okay, fine. Now, slightly medial to this pointer, we are putting our needle. And how we should put our needle? We should put our needle, look at this picture, okay? We should put our needle in such a way that it is almost parallel with the CR beam. So, it is almost parallel with the CR beam. And let's take a picture. Okay, so we are there and we need to go in. Check. We have to go in a tunnel view. Check. Okay, now you cannot see the length of the needle, but what you can see now is actually a point. So that is the needle. 
you can see the needle now what we are doing we are entering check we are still maintaining this barrel gun view but after going some distance it is time to check the lateral view so when we should go to check the lateral view it depends because we should not go too much that it actually hits the vertebral body rather that what we will be doing we will be going in such a fashion that it should be should not be touching the nerves that there is no definite depth that in this patient you will get at this depth because patient to patient it varies and depending on the angle of the cyan it also varies but your needle should be fixed and almost in a tunnel view and when you are satisfied that when you will be pushing the needle and it will not going to change the direction then you can change it to the lateral side but don't go too much in in that case there is a possibility that you might hit the nerve accidentally now we are moving the cyan towards the lateral view Okay, so we need to go to the proper place. Five degree niche nine. So up or down? Five degree. I have to put it. Okay. So now we can see the radio. It is just behind the facet joint. It is at the level of the facet joint, and under this view, we need to go slightly in. Okay, centimeter by centimeter, maybe half millimeter, two millimeter, like that. Okay, very slowly. So now we are just inside the frame. Okay, so that means this is our almost final needle position. Okay, so in this position, first we need to put the die and then check in the AP view. Okay, we are going to check in the AP view. Okay, so it is not properly AP. So make it proper AP. So in proper AP view, from the spinous process, the pedicle of the both the sides will be almost equidistant. Okay. Okay. So this is almost a true AP, and here you can see it is well within. Okay. So it is by just going by just by the side of the facet joint. And it is in the epidural space. Now, how the die distribution will look? I am drawing roughly how the die distribution will look, but it is definitely it won't be the exact distribution. It will come along the nerves like this, and some die will go in, some die will may come out to the other spaces, other spaces, and here, depending on how much volume you are putting in. now if you are seeing that the there is no die die is vanishing what does it signify it signifies that our needle is inside the vessel that's why when you are injecting the omnipex 300 die it is going inside the blood vessel and then taken away okay so these are the things what we need to do and we have to do it like that only now going to the next approach that as told previously we used to do that approach but now it is it is not commonly done that is a self triangle approach or the sub pedicular approach initial portions are the same okay so here we are at the same point now keeping that needle there and showing it with a second needle so this is not a sub pedicular approach so you can understand 
you are going to enter from below the pedicle and above the sorry, at six o'clock position of the pedicle we are going to enter okay so this is roughly the place where we, we need to put the needle now we are going to put the needle here at this point Are you able to see now? Okay, fine. So we are putting our needle here, and the same way we have to make it parallel with the the arm beam, and then we have to put the needle. Okay, I have moved the pointer out. Check. Okay, so that is the. Our needle position is the subperpendicular, and I have put it almost at the tunnel view. So I think you can see both the needles. This is the one. This is the other one. Okay. So both are pointed. That's why you can see almost a dot in both the cases. Now we need to go to keeping the direction same. And we will be checking intermittently if the needle has moved in some other direction or not. We can rotate the needle if we feel it has gone wrong. Okay, so now we are going to make it. Luckily, and one thing is important here. I am showing keeping our needle there at the camel triangle, but don't think we do both together. Okay, this is only for your showing, showing you. But usually nowadays we only follow the Kamen's triangle approach. Okay, we do not do subpendicular. Okay, so we can see our needle tip. Needle tip is exactly. Under the vertical axis. Now we need to slightly go in so that again our needle will be within the frame. So it has gone in slightly more. Okay, so it is there. We should not go further. Check. So that is our final needle position. So it is like the nerve is coming out from this place. And we are first below the nerve, then we are above the nerve, like this. The nerve is like this, and we are going above and below in both the sides. Okay, but nowadays, why the stress angle is less used? Because the radicular artery, segmental radicular artery, enters through that triangle. That was not known previously. So previously, they used to use the stress triangle much more, but nowadays we prefer the Kamen triangle much more. So let us do the same thing. We need to check the epi view here as well. So you can see it is well within. Okay. So these are the two needles. So when it is going like the above needle, it is a safe triangle approach. When it is going like the below needle, it is the Kamen triangle approach. And nowadays we prefer the Kamen triangle approach most. that was the demonstration of the transforamental epidural steroid injection